the thought might be then, well, what happens to all the extra tissue? Is there, is there like piles of piles of, of organs just in some kind of warehouse somewhere? Believe it or not, no, you can't take your organs with you. My name is Dr. Rich Hills and you're watching my channel, Knife Skills. One of the most common questions that I get is, can I take my gallstones home with me? So it's a bit of a surprising question, but a lot of people actually do have this curiosity. I made these gallstones. Can I have them when the surgery is done? Well, when I get asked that question, the short answer I say to them is no. Now, we'll talk a little bit more at the end of the video because that actually isn't completely accurate. There is maybe uh, an exception to that. How about new? But let's get into it here. So why, why can't you take your organs home with you? Like what's, what's going on here? Well, whenever you have surgery, very often tissue is going to be removed. Now, when the tissue is removed, the typical process for that tissue is for it to go to the pathology department. Now, why would you need to have tissue go off to another department? Well, what happens in the pathology department is that it's evaluated under the microscope. The process essentially goes like this. The pathology assistant will take a look at the tissue, see if there's any abnormalities on the surface or, or anything that's uh, unusual, and then they'll create some slides that the pathologist then can look at. Those slides will have special stains, and you can see really what's going on. And the primary purpose of doing that whole process, which is costly, and will depend a little bit on uh, every healthcare system, but certainly in North America, at least where in Canada, pretty much all tissue that's removed from the operating room will go through this process. And it happens actually for two primary reasons. The first reason I think is the most obvious one, and that is confirmation of the diagnosis. So think about it this way. If you're operating on a gallbladder or an appendix, oftentimes the diagnosis is really obvious. You know what it is, it's appendicitis or it's cholecystitis or something like that. And the gallbladder or the appendix is coming out for a particular reason. But there are other times when there's a bit more diagnostic uncertainty. And by having a pathologist look under the microscope, put some special stains on the cells, look at it from a cellular perspective, you can get a confirmation or at least more information about the diagnosis. That's especially important for things like inflammatory bowel disease, or maybe there's an unexpected cancer. And I think this is actually one of the things that people may not realize, that in up to 2% of appendix specimens that are removed, there's cancer in it. So many patients will come to hospital, they'll have appendicitis, no problem, 98% of the time, we take the appendix out, and that's exactly what it is. But every once in a while, again, up to 2% of the time, when we look under the microscope at that appendix specimen, we actually find a cancer. And that's an opportunity for the patient's life to be saved. Finding that cancer, though, might have an impact for them. Maybe they need a colonoscopy. Maybe they need a CT scan. Maybe they need chemotherapy. Maybe they need something else. And by evaluating that appendix under the microscope, we have that opportunity. It's actually really interesting. That particular fact uh, extends to this new issue of how there's more and more non-operative appendicitis happening. More and more are we treating appendicitis with antibiotics rather than surgery. And that's really should be a topic for another video, but there's lots of growing evidence and a growing trend in that direction, of course, in select patients. But one of the common problems and criticisms of all of those studies is that if you don't take out the appendix, there's no opportunity for the pathologist to look at it and find those rare but significant cancers. And that could happen to a gallbladder, colon, all kinds of things. And so it's actually very, very useful. So that confirmation of the diagnosis is a critical feature of this whole process of actually having the organ removed and evaluated by pathology. But there's another reason, and that's accountability. In general, doctors are extremely honest people who are focused on providing the best possible care for the patient. But that honesty and trust that people have in the doctors really has another side to it. Trust really comes when there is accountability. In so many ways in our society, we enforce trust 
by ensuring there's an element of accountability. And that happens for surgeons in many different ways. One of the most common ways that we establish accountability among surgeons is this morbidity and mortality rounds. Now, they've changed over the years in how they're structured, and I can't say that every single hospital is using formal morbidity and mortality rounds on a regular basis, but certainly this is a cornerstone to providing high-quality surgical care. It's not meant to embarrass people or expose people's faults necessarily. What it is, it's, it's really meant, again, to be that forum for accountability. When something goes wrong, you present your mistakes, and that way that ensures that you're always providing your best. You're always working towards your best. Knowing that you're going to have to have your mistakes discussed keeps you, again, accountable, keeps you on your toes. It keeps you focused on providing that best possible care and prevents people from, in a lot of ways, slipping through the cracks. I know in uh, Dr. Atul Gawande's book, Complications, he talks a little bit about mortality and morbidity rounds. And that's an excellent book. And I'd really encourage you to take a look at it. It's an old book now, but it's fantastic if you're interested in this type of thing. But every once in a while, surgeons might not remove the tissue that maybe they said they did. And so having a pathologist confirm it's important. Or maybe the surgeon's removing tissue that would otherwise be normal. And again, if that turns out to be a trend, that could be a problem. Or maybe, again, um, you thought it was one thing, but it really is something else. And that accountability is what's established by having those tissues removed and evaluated in the pathology department. So pretty much everything that gets taken out in the hospital gets sent to pathology to be evaluated. Now, the organ itself is destroyed through that process. It's cut up into slides. Um, the tissues are, are, are damaged to the point that it, there's no nothing really to look at at the end of this. And so for that reason, there's really no reason to take your organ home with you. So that really answers the question. If you come to the hospital and r remove your organs, you're not going home uh, with them. But it is kind of interesting because the thought might be then, well, what happens to all the extra tissue? Is there, is there like piles of piles of, of organs just in some kind of warehouse somewhere? Well, no. Most of the tissue actually gets incinerated. But the tissue that ends up on a slide needs to be stored for a period of time. Typically for a normal slide, it's about five years. And if it's got some abnormalities on it, it's up to 20 years. Again, your state, your region, your province might have different rules with this regard, but there is some kind of health record policy that'll be set by your state or government that will require those tissues to be maintained for years to come. And that's important because there may be a need for a second look or a second opinion on a particular slide or result, especially in certain types of cancers when you're trying to guide treatment. That, that is critically important. So... Let's get back to this question. Well, can you take your gallstones home with you? Because from a surgeon point of view, is a gallstone isn't a tissue. It doesn't have to go off to the pathologist. It could if you're trying to determine what kind of gallstone it is. And again, that might have relevance. But for the most part, certainly in my uh, region, we don't evaluate every gallstone for the type of gallstone. So I could easily just at the end of the case, open up the gallbladder, take out the gallstone, bring it to the patient. I could totally do that. But obviously the hospital policy doesn't want surgeons carrying tissues around and giving them to patients. So the policy is that everything that's removed goes through the pathology department. But that's not necessarily the end point for this. Let's think about another example. Bullets. So I'm a trauma surgeon. It's not uncommon for a bullet to be rem removed. We send it off to the pathology department. Now, they're not going to be evaluating that bullet under the microscope or anything. But they are going to record that they received it. They are going to document the patient that it came from and those types of procedures. And the police that might want that bullet can go to the pathology department, fill the proper paperwork, and retrieve that bullet so they can do their own analysis. Well, depending on the hospital you're in, that may actually be possible for the remaining tissue or the gallstones in your case. I'm not saying it can, and uh, it most likely you'd have pretty strong barriers to getting them. But I'm not saying that it's impossible. Most hospitals will have some kind of procedure for tissue to be removed. You can think about it another way. That hospital might need you to essentially move a slide from that hospital to another hospital if they need another pathology to look at, at it. There's, there's reasons for stuff to come out of that department and there'll be a procedure for it. Again, in your case, 
they might say no, but a procedure will likely be in place in your hospital to remove tissues, organs, um, implants, like, again, uh, a bullet in this case, uh, they could possibly be removed. So that's my summary there. If you come to hospital and we take your organs, they're staying with us. So my name is Dr. Richard Hills, and thank you for watching my channel. I really appreciate all your comments. If you have had something removed uh, and you were able to keep it, I'd be really interested in uh, seeing your comments below. That TikTok video that I talked about earlier, there were so many comments on it about uh, people telling me the different things that they were able to keep after the doctor removed it. And I thought that was really, really interesting. So I'd love to hear those. If you would like to put those in the comments below, I think that'd be really uh, fun. I love interacting with the comments. That engagement is really why I'm here and why I keep making these videos. Some of the videos do well and, and there's a lot more comments, hard to really respond to everyone. But for the most part, I, I read them all and I appreciate every uh, interaction that you have. So once again, thank you for sticking around and watching my videos. I appreciate it. I'm here for you. Have a great day.